Good morning, everybody. Please be seated. And a very warm welcome to you all this morning on this beautiful summer's day. It's absolutely gorgeous out there this morning. Hello to everybody at home. Hello to everybody who might be watching us on um, Catch Up, on YouTube, or on the, the Facebook page or the website. So welcome, everybody, to the service of Holy Communion. Um, and today is the Feast of Pentecost. We are celebrating Pentecost today. Um, just before we start our worship, I just want to say, I know um, one of the church wardens will probably mention it again later, but I just want to add my thanks as well to everybody who helped with the flower sale yesterday, the plant sale. It was absolutely amazing. I've never been involved in the plant sale here before, but it, the, the number of plants that were there was astounding, and the number of people, and what got to me most was the fellowship Everybody all working together, all sort of coming with our cars, loading them up and then going out to see all these people and delivering the plants. It really was a lovely atmosphere. So thank you very much and especially to Gail and Lawrence because they put so much hard work into it. So thank you all. And let's just have a moment of quiet before we begin our worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. It is risen indeed, Alleluia. For I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all the countries, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. Come from every corner of the earth, from every time and place, from south and north. For the Spirit of God is being poured out upon us in this place the men and women. So let's stand and sing, Breathe on me, breath of God. Please be seated as we prepare to make our confession to God. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin. In different ways, we have grieved the Holy Spirit and so confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us by your spirit. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us by your spirit for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us by your spirit. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us by your spirit. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of 
Amen. And the collect for Pentecost. God, who has at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We'll have our first reading. Thank you, Pam. First reading this morning is from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out of the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones, he led me to and fro among them, and I saw great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word <coughs> of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make you breathe, breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and I was prophesying there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says, Come, breathe from the four winds and the breath into these slain, and they may live. So I prophesied it as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off, therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves, I will bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. <clears throat> they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, 
Pontus and Asia, <coughs> Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. <coughs> Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if that's comfortable for you. And our second hymn this morning is Spirit of God as Strong as the Wind. Oh. <laughs> I did not tell you this in the beginning because I was with you. 
but now I'm going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you were filled with grief because I said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me, about righteousness because I'm going to the Father, but you can see me no more. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive. He will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why the Spirit was received from me, and he will make you known to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Alle, alle, alle.
They have come to Jerusalem and they hear this, this Jesus set or whatever they are and suddenly, well we thought that was all over, he's dead isn't he? But suddenly there they are, they're out on the streets and people are saying, well they've had a few haven't they, you know what I mean? Nine o'clock in the morning, got me so far, maybe they're drunk. But there's some sort of religious experience happening there. And there's a sense of authenticity. Because people see what they're doing and they're thinking, this doesn't make any sense, I can't understand it. And they can say, can someone explain what's going on? The first Christian sermon happened not because there was a rota. The first Christian sermon happened because people were asking questions. I remember the disciples were saying, hey Peter, it's your turn, get up big fella and start saying, giving us some of the answers. And Peter gets up that front and says, this is what was promised through the prophet Joel, that God's spirit would be poured out. And he shares this with these Jews who are from all over the Mediterranean. And it says later on that over 2,000 were converted that day and baptized. Oh, and then you see the beginning. And in the book of Acts, there were several places where the Holy Spirit comes. And there's a sense of God's presence. But notice, it isn't just, okay, it's a nice religious experience. When the Spirit comes, he then drives his people out into the world. He's sending them out as agents, as ambassadors, lights for Christ, if you like. And he's showing ways in which the Spirit is the enabler, the empower, the one, if you like, who fills up the batteries and enables God's people. And there's a sense in which the Spirit is also the disturber. He does new and amazing things. And in the book of Acts, everything flows from this moment, really, the, 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 the giving of the Spirit. And the whole of Acts is really how the whole Jesus movement changes from Jerusalem through to Antioch and the other places, and then it goes around the whole Mediterranean. And it all goes back to here, little by little, it bursts out of its Jewish heritage alone and becomes for the Gentiles too. And that is shared through a number of stories in this way. But the whole thing starts with the Spirit. Now you might think to yourself, okay, that's 2,000 years ago, you know, that was in the Bible, but you know, it's not like that today, is it? Well, I just want to tell you a little story. Many people I discover don't know any of this. Do you know what Pentecostals are? Okay, Pentecostals are a tradition in the churches. There's one down the road, isn't there? What's it called? Calvary. 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 I think it's in the Pentecostal tradition. Uh, Pentecostal churches are Pen are churches which look back to Acts 2 as their model and as their experience. There are churches where there is an intense sense of the presence of God, an amazing sense of joy, often expressed in body language, in dancing, in singing, services which often go on for an hour or two. You don't get short change at the Pentecostal church. And they are very dynamic. And they are exploding in growth around the world. It may not be that big in this country, but in many parts of the world, they are the fastest growing parts of the Christian world. I want to tell you the story of that. It all starts in 1905 with a man called William Seymour in America. Uh, William Seymour was born with two challenges, if you like, in his life. One, he was disability. He was, he was blind in one eye. You can imagine when he was at school, everyone called him names, etc. Secondly, he was black. Pentecostalism, by the way, is primarily a black experience of the global stage. It began in the black community. And this guy, he was a wonderful Christian. He applied to go to Bible college and they said no because he's black. And he eventually managed to turn, he was allowed to go to Bible college and whilst the students sat in the seminars, he sat outside in the corridor because he was black. But he did it. And then he went to a place called Azusa Street in Los Angeles and he took on a building and turned it into a <coughs> church. And there was an amazing revival, basically 1906 to 1915, I think that's right. And I'm not quite sure how it happened, but there was an explosion of the Holy Spirit and of joy and of love and of worship and celebration. And people flocked in large numbers, huge numbers. And it caused a big stir because their music was off sort of very lively start. Okay, I'll get you a bell to give you an example later on. Um, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself, could I? <laughs> you were sitting duck at the front row, you really are. <coughs> but 
that the life and then you can plant seed in the church. I don't mean bored, but it's not strictly, I mean just to glue you around. You know, the sense of the spirit. And they cause a lot of problems because the <coughs> men and women dance together. Okay, not strictly, don't think that's more about like a cute celebration. And that caused a big stir in Los Angeles. And there's something far worse. Black people and white people were dancing together. And that also caused a big stir. And the reputation of this church exploded beyond America, across the Europe. And people came from all over the world to Azusa Street in Los Angeles and were touched by the Spirit. And as on the day of Pentecost, they then were sent out. I read a story once about two pastors uh, <coughs> in the church in, in Street. They were quite disillusioned. And they went out to Azusa Street in Los Angeles and had the Pentecostal experience. As a result of that, it wasn't, I had a nice time, I'll go back home. They gave up their jobs in Sweden and they both bought one more tickets to Brazil and they went there and they started Pentecostal churches. And they never went back. And the other thing was when they got elderly, instead of saying, well, I'll go back there and get someone in to replace me, they handed over the leadership to the Brazilians who, touched by the Spirit, were also into leadership. And, well, I've never heard the full story, but when I was a victim in London, um, there was a, uh, a, Brazilian, a, a Brazilian Pentecostal church started down the road from me. They took over an old cinema, because they don't think small fry, they took large numbers. <coughs> now, I know, as far as I know, there were no Brazilians in that part of uh, London. It was a Brazilian missionary church to the English people because the spirit moves and it explodes where it wants to go. And there's an amazing thing about the Pentecostals, is that something about the nature of that joy, that celebration, flows out and people catch it. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to say there are lots of problems with the Pentecostal movement too. And I can give you a whole list of mistakes and things that have gone wrong, and you, know, you can criticise as well. But there's also a real sense of very often but that joy swells up and the spirit drives them out into the communities. Now, I'm not saying we have to be a Pentecostal church. I'm not planning to put up a disco ball up there. I'm not going to get Linda to start paying the drugs on Sunday mornings. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's how you job. Um, but I can't help wondering if all of us need this Pentecostal Sunday, this Pentecostal Sunday. So just think about what happened all those years in Jerusalem, thank you, and <laughs> what happened in Los Angeles 120 years ago, but it's still happening around the world. Because I am totally church of England, I'm going to be absolutely clear about that. But also, I have a heart for wishing that in every church, whatever the label, we might have a real sense of the Holy Spirit. And that in our worship, you can almost touch Jesus because his presence is so strong with his spirit. And when that happens, and it, how it happens, it differs enormously from one church to another. It could be Anglican, it could be Catholic, it could be Methodist, whatever it may be. But I would love that to happen in St. John's. I don't know what it would look like. The spirit doesn't sort of fit into one box. But I would love it if the nature of our church was so touched by the spirit. We knew his presence like that. And if we experience something of like that, well, what might God do here in St. James? Thank you, Simon. So please stand and let's affirm our faith in God together by saying the short creed in our order of service. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated and Gail will lead us in prayer.
When I say, Lord, come to bless us, please respond and fill us with your spirit. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Lord God Almighty, pour upon us your spirit and set us on fire with love for you, that we may bring forth the fruits of love, joy and peace and live to the praise of your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos, bring order to our actions and purpose to our lives. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Holy Spirit, moving in the deep places of creation, move in the depths of our hearts. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Holy Spirit, breathing life into all creatures, refresh, renew, restore your people. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Holy Spirit, giver of all good gifts, help us to use our talents and abilities to your glory. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Holy Spirit, giving life to dry bones, giving hope and joy to all who are weary. Restore the lives which, which without you are dead. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Holy Spirit, giver of love, kindle the hearts which without you are dull and cold. Fill your church, our hearts and minds with love. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, upon the newly baptized and all new Christians. Come upon the recently confirmed and all who are growing in their faith. Come upon all who are testing their vocations and all who are in new work. Come upon all bishops, priests and deacons, upon all who seek to serve you. Come upon all who strive to proclaim your power and your presence. Come upon the powerless and the oppressed. Come be known among the unemployed and exploited. Come and give comfort the anxious and the fearful. Come and give strength to the ill and the dying. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We finish our prayer. Generous God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon Jesus at the River Jordan and upon his disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your spirit. Hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand if you are able. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy and peace. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share, and let's share that peace also with those online.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, this day we give you thanks because in fulfilment of your promise, you will pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us with your promise, and you get, lead us into all truth, uniting peoples of every tongue in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, the Son and the Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey this command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine make it to us his body, and his blood, who in the same act that he was betrayed, took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we who remember are his offering himself, may once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in song the everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We sit on kneel to pray the Lord's prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit, and open to every race and nation the way of life eternal. Open our lips by your Spirit, that every time may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of power, may the boldness of your Spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your Spirit lead us. May the gifts of your Spirit we bring us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. The Lord is here. And his Spirit is with us. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love, for in Pentecost dawn the age of the Spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every believer, strong and weak, women and men, tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old dream dreams. And the new wine of the Spirit, they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth bands of the new creation, the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
So first of all, uh, a quick apology for the late start. Uh, it was due to, shall we say, technical difficulties. Uh, we had a few technical. We had a few technical problems. Um, <laughs> and there weren't Lawrence's. I mean, uh, that makes a change. Speaking, <laughs> speaking for myself, I think moving away from using parchment was a really <laughs> silly move. There's parchment doesn't crash. Korean. Parchment doesn't crash. Um, anyway, um, just to add to what Linda said earlier, thank you so much for all those who came and helped with the plant sale yesterday, um, whether it was sorting, whether it was delivering, uh, catering and all the rest, it really was an impressive effort. Um, there are still plants for sale, so uh, you're welcome to, to purchase. Um, Lawrence can advise on uh, methods of payment. Um, 8th of June, so so about two weeks away, three weeks away, uh, is the church fair, 12 till 2, and the barbecue. Uh, there are um, spaces on the list in the corridor to sign up to run a table and a stall. Um, this evening, you'll see it on the back of the, the notice sheet, there is prayer, praise and testimony uh, at the Hope Centre at 5.30 for one hour, at hymns for Pentecost, etc. Um, and finally, if... Uh, if you've got any small prizes suitable for the jam jar game, um, please see Carol, uh, who is running that. Any other notices that I should be? Andrea, please do. Um, so I think it's a really important one, actually, especially on today of Pentecost. I've been, I've been sat at the back thinking about what I'm going to say, and I don't really know what I'm going to say. but. Um, I don't know if you remember, but on my first Sunday here, so like two weeks ago, um, Lawrence uh, had to head home and, and offloaded his, his intercessions to me. He's very happy to do. Um, but one of, one of our congregation here came and asked, could we have prayer for baby Chloe? So we had a very special prayer that we, that we inserted for little baby Chloe, who was incredibly poorly at that time. Um, and so that individual has come to me this morning, they came to me last week and said that she's doing much better. Um, and actually she's come to me this morning to say that she's back at nursery now. So Hallelujah. on this celebration day, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your prayers and to thank God for answering those prayers um, in such an amazing and quick way. So thank you so much. Thank you for that, Andrea. That is, that is just wonderful. Can't say any more. Now we come to our final hymn, uh, That Was Almighty Word. <coughs> During the singing of the hymn, the light of the East, the candle is shared among the congregation. I've not been here for this service for some strange reason over the years, so I don't know quite what I'm doing. Hopefully, Lawrence and Linda do, but that's not the point. <laughs> We come forward. Okay. Come forward and and so let's stand and sing to him. Carry on
For 50 days we celebrate the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts and we pray that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be working us. As part of God's here in Macclesfield, Cheshire, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk with God's future, trusting him to be your guide? Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ in the world's dark places? We will. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Today we have remembered the coming of God's power and the disciples and we invite that same Spirit to drive us out into the wild places of the world. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us make you joy from the service of the Lord. May the Spirit who set the church on fire on the day of Pentecost bring the church to life with the love of the risen Christ. Now we blow each of our luck candles out. Well, we can. Linda, would you blow forward that one, please? And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, we go into the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.